Okay, awesome. So yeah, photographing 2D flat work, it's really important for documentation, especially if your work isn't digital already. So if you're doing drawings, paintings, that kind of a thing, then getting a good reference to it that is accurate to what you're actually doing without distortion is really important for documentation purposes. So I'm going to go over some things with you and a step-by-step -step kind of basis, which is also explained in the handout here. The first thing you want to do is to remove it from a frame or glass. Actually, may I borrow that? Just for demonstration purposes, thank you. So what you'd want to do is if this was, if you wanted to photograph this, you'd want to take it out of the glass, because you can see there's, all, there's glare all over the place. So that's the first step. The second thing you want to do is you want to place it flat against the wall that preferably has a neutral color like black, white, or gray. And you just need to mount it so it's totally level. If you're using a light, something like this over here, you can mount it on the, on the ground if you have the camera looking straight down into it, but most of us don't have that at home, so you're going to mount it to the wall. So the next picture I'll go over has that. Maybe someone's trying to get in here. Okay. So this is what a drawing that I did a while ago. This is just a picture of what it looks like in the frame. It's just chilling right there. And then, you know, this is just a little detail shot of how I, how I hung it up, actually. But this is more what it, what it ends up looking like. So there's a few things that you're going to notice in your hand already from how it looks. Sorry. It's all right. A few things you'll notice right away is that I have my tripod totally level, and I have it exactly in the middle of the artwork. So that's really important because if you don't have it totally level and even, you're going to get lens distortion. It's not going to look quite right. You can fix a lot of stuff in Photoshop and Lightroom, but the less you have to do later, the better. So we'll just go over lighting here for a second. You don't have to have an elaborate setup for this. You really just need even lighting that's the same color temperature. And by color temperature, I mean, I'll go to the next slide real quick. What, I, what really is good is about 5,000 K. So when you get into your fluorescent lights, that's kind of closer to what these look like, actually. This is actually pretty decent lighting. But when you get into um, like bulbs that you buy from the hardware store, traditional cheap bulbs, they're usually more of the warmer tone. And sometimes LEDs are more of the bluer tone. So what you want to do is just look for something that looks like a, a high noon kind of 5000K color. Is that marked on the yes, package then? it is. Okay. Yep, it's in the handout. No, on the package of the bulb. Oh, yeah, they, they do have those on there. There's like daylight bulbs, mm -hmm. and those are pretty close to what you want to go for. Okay. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it really should be really close. And um, so, you know, ideally, you want to get it to a light temperature of 5,000. And like I said before, you don't have to have expensive flashes, strobes, umbrellas. It just needs to be soft lighting. And one great way to do this is with umbrellas mounted on a light stand. So... If you're really doing this and you want to do it right, you're going to want to have it mounted like this. So the way that I did this and set it up was, again, my camera is right in the middle of the, of the artwork. Everything's level. Tripod's level, artwork's level. I have these at a 45 degree angle, pointing right towards the artwork on both sides. The reason I have umbrellas, does anybody know why I'm using umbrellas? Make it more diffuse. Exactly, yeah, making it more diffused. And that's important, especially if your artwork has, let's say, like different layers on it, or they're raised up and down. If you don't have umbrellas, it's, you're going to see hard shadows on those sides, and that's not, gonna, that's not really going to look very good. So I'm going to go back here. Yep, 45 degree angles you want to have. You want to have it far enough away so the light is spread out evenly. Uh, if you have them too close, you're going to just notice a lot of like, hot spots, which is what you want to avoid, because, again, it's not even lighting. If you are using strobes and you have a light meter, you can use one of these little devices right here and pretend like this right here is my artwork for a second. And I had big lights over here. I would take my light meter, I would hit it here, hit it in all the corners, and then I hit it in the middle too. And I want to make sure that I read that my f-stop was at f8, shutter speed is at whatever it needs to be. Basically, they only need to be the same exact settings. So then you know, okay, when I take a picture of this thing, it's all going to look even. And, you know, this is just how I had it all look. The umbrellas actually should be facing the other direction. 
if you're doing it with strobes especially because it's going to be so bright. But if your bulbs aren't that bright, this might work. It worked for me when I set it up. The diagram that I have in the, in the handout does have them showing is the reverse of this. So I just want to point that out to not have any confusion. Okay, so yeah, make sure everything's level. That's really important. I have a few slides of that. This was something that I took a picture of, um, getting it real nice and even for me. Everything's right in the middle. I'm shooting this thing horizontally, even though my picture was vertical. Now, that's just a choice of mine. You don't have to do it that way. But what I've found is that it's easier to make things level with the camera because most cameras don't have a mount already on the side of the camera. And sometimes when you get like an L bracket and you switch it around, it can make it difficult to fine tune. And plus, resolution these days is pretty high. I didn't mind cropping it a little bit. So I just left it like this. So let's go over camera settings. Does anybody know why RAW is better than JPEG? Or what the difference really is? I'll go over that real quick. So with point and shoot cameras, they're mostly going to shoot JPEGs, which is an 8-bit flattened file <coughs> with limited color information. When you shoot in RAW, let's say that the color the bulbs you get aren't really all that 5,000K temperature you wanted to do. And you're like, well, I'm going to have to just work with what I got. If you're shooting in RAW, you can go back later and actually readjust the light temperature so it's going to be perfect for what you want it to look like. Basically, RAW has the most information in it, so you can always fine tune things later. So the camera aperture, which is marked as A or AB on a Nikon or Canon camera, and I believe Sony as well, that's what I like to have mine locked to or manual mode. Uh, the reason is because if you're using a lens that has like an f2.8 number, uh, typically lenses at the lowest number of f-stops is not the sharpest setting in the lens. Typically, if you go about two steps higher, uh, it's going to get you about the sharpest range. So I wrote 5.6 to ensure everything in focus, but you could do it at f8, you could do it at f11. The point is you want it to be very sharp. So if you're buying a lens that isn't really all that expensive, it's probably going to be 3.5 to 5.6. Put it at f8. Okay? So. The next thing to do is color balance, which I already went over. Uh, in your camera, you have a white balance setting. You'll be able to go through and see, OK, this looks too warm. This looks too cool. This looks really good. So even if you are shooting a JPEG, you can get this thing fine-tuned pretty good as long as you can adjust the white balance in your camera. And the third thing to go over here, well, fourth thing really, is to have it on a shutter release cable or a timer setting on the tripod. Does anybody know why that's very important? So it doesn't shake. <laughs> yep, so it doesn't shake. Because you doing this to the button, you know, this is the tripod right here, you doing this, pressing the button is causing the camera shake. So you have it on a two second delay, walk away, it takes your picture, no big deal, or have a release cable, you're not touching the camera at all. That's very important. I mean, you can have all your settings perfect, but if you don't do that, you're going to get blurry images, and that's never good. So this is just a picture of, of my camera on what looks like the best settings for the situation were. I have it at 5.6. The shutter speed is at 13th of a second. That doesn't matter, though, because it's on a tripod. And you could have it at one minute if you really had to, although that would be kind of ridiculous. But you could. Here's an overview of what I've been talking about. Make sure that the artwork is level against the wall. Make sure that this is exactly lined up to the middle of the artwork. You can use a tape measure. Ideally, that's a good idea to do that, to really get that center point marked. Um, you don't have to be 100% accurate. It's not like anyone's really going to notice if you're a millimeter off here or there. But it's good to just get things right in the first place, because if you don't, you're going to deal with distortion later. Um, 45 degrees from the art with the lights. And that's just so you can get the maximum amount of coverage with both lights, and they cross each other, so then the shadows from each other's light sources are going to cancel each other out. Uh, you could do it with one light source right behind the camera, but you're going to deal with that hot spot issue where the middle of the artwork is going to be more bright than the edges of it are going to be. So the best thing to do is just to get two light sources. OK, final thoughts. Most people that are going to be using an SLR camera are going to be using zoom lenses. And zoom lenses are never perfect, no matter how good the lens is. There's always distortion. So the best thing to do is to move the lens in the middle of the zoom range. It's a, if it's a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens, put it at 50 millimeters. That way, you're going to get the best proportions. If you're not really sure, 
go look at a brick wall and take a picture with your camera and see how all the bricks line up because that's important to, re to reference. You can always move your tripod backwards and forwards here. Let's say that you're really poor, you don't have any money, you don't have any lights, but you do have a tripod on a camera. What you can do is go out on a, a day, not quite like today, it's a little bit bright and sunny, but maybe a more overcast day, or say you don't oh, have to use the shot today. Go to the edge of a building where there's a shadow, where the sun isn't directly on it. That way you're automatically going to get this really nice diffused bright light. And it's already going to be your ideal color temperature, that 5,000 high noon temperature. You're going to want to have that. That's kind of a, a good way to do it, honestly. Like I've had friends go outside on an overcast day, hang it up on their wall. It looks beautiful. So that's what you can do for real cheap. You don't have to worry about it, but you know, ideally you want to use two lights. So that's pretty much everything right there. Does anybody have any questions? I had a quick question. I heard of people, I don't know if it's true or not, use those um, China bulb lights to diffuse your light, to put a, like a hotter bulb in, in one of those, like a hanging China lantern. bulb light. Like a lantern thing? Yeah, it's got like the rice paper like <laughs> sphere. Oh, bulb. yes. Okay, yeah, that, that would work. Could you use something like that? Like maybe yeah. two of them maybe, or like on either side? You could, you could. Yeah. That would, uh, it really depends on how bright it is and where it's positioned. If it's right. far enough away from it and it already has that paper over it, right. it's going to be diffused. And you'll know because if you just walk up and you say, like, oh, take, take a pen or something and put it on the wall, if you if you notice really hard edges going like this way, this way, all different shadow. directions, right. that's not good. Right. But if you don't see much of a shadow, you're going to be like, oh, you know what? This is going to work. Gotcha. And it's kind of common sense, too. Like, if you look at your artwork and it doesn't look very good, right. or it does look really good, you can kind of roll with it. Right. Okay. On the copy stand, you, we sort of makeshift did the same thing you're talking about with with a um, paper yeah, diffused paper, paper just it. put okay, paper right. yeah mm -hmm. do, yeah that do you have any recommendations uh, the next step from sunlight if, if you don't want to go outside and, and mm -hmm. it's 30 degrees or less um, and what would be a, an in, the most inexpensive setup for someone in their home say in their homes yeah um, what you could do is put it in a window that faces the sun, and then you could take a piece of like tracing paper, put it over the window. Mm -hmm. That creates a big diffuse diffuse box in a way, okay. and that would actually give you a really nice mm -hmm. uh, look. So you said that we should remove the work from frame. If we couldn't do it, is there any way to mm, hide the reflection of the glass on the wall? So if you really can't remove it from the glass, like if you absolutely can't, you might be forced to shoot it at an angle, or, but then you're gonna have to go back in post-production in Photoshop or Lightroom and correct the angle of it. And it won't look too bad, you know, ideally, but, cause I would rather do that than try to Photoshop out a reflection. Sometimes people will do that like if you're shooting in a gallery and something's mm -hmm. up there with glass, then, then you'll just shoot it from an angle. You go at an angle, you take yeah. a picture of it. Photoshop has a really good lens corrective tool, I believe it's called that, mm -hmm. something like that. And you can it'll automatically sort of get it to where you want it to be. Yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, any other questions? So the umbrellas, I mean, that seems like another step up I mean, there are photo umbrellas that are, you know, white or gray or something like that, rather than something that you're going to take outside in, in the rain. Yeah. Well, the reason it needs to be white is because light needs to pass through it. Like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to go home and use your blue umbrella because right. it's going to throw up your white balance. Right. Yeah. If you do have a white umbrella with maybe some text on it, that's probably not going to make that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. You could just use something like that. But the neutral color is what's really important with these umbrellas. And you don't want a light stand, well, put up a light, put a lamp up, get some duct tape, mm -hmm. put it somewhere where it's far enough from the light source to diffuse it. You know, you can, you can make it work. You know those clamp lights, maybe? You like yeah, like a clamp bulb, like you said, put a piece of, you know, paper over it or something. Yeah. Would that work? Yeah. yeah, that would work too. Um, yeah, paper would work. If it's a really bright light, you could even just use computer paper. Or hopefully bigger computer paper, but you could use like a computer paper or get um, a piece of foam core or a big white poster sheet, take the light, point it at the poster sheet or like a white wall, and then the light's gonna bounce back 
and it's mm -hmm. going to also help diffuse it. it. It kind of all starts to look, you know, common sense, like when you start seeing how it reflects back on the picture. Do you, rem you recommend any particular kind of bulb to use? I don't have any specific recommendations other than the color temperature is really the most I important I mean, like, thing. halogen's really hot. If you put paper in front of that, it would start a fire. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy you pointed that out because that is important. You don't want to burn your house down <laughs> and take a picture of your, your drawing and you... Uh, it's not worth it. <laughs> no, it's just not worth it. So, that yeah, that's a good point. Make sure that whatever you're using to diffuse it isn't right up against the bulb. Yeah. yeah. 